Good evening, everyone. I want to extend a warm welcome to Baroness Cox, Councillor, Mr. and Mrs. Bell, Consul Hayarp Dermerian, Mr. and Mrs. Janov, and our dear guests and friends. I will now invite Baroness Cox to the stage. Please welcome her uh, with open arms. I'm trying to remember my Armenian for good evening. Harry year ago? Yes. Shatlav, Shnur Galatun. And we'll remember uh, the memory, the year of commemoration of the Armenian genocide in April 2015. I had the privilege of being at the Global Forum in Yerevan, which was commemorating the centenary of the genocide. And it was an amazing place where there was a lot of evidence and a lot of testimonies given uh, to commemorate the genocide. And many nations which do recognize the genocide were present there. Unfortunately, the British government does not, but I'm sure you know that Wales does. Free cheers for the Welsh. And in Cardiff, in Peace Park, there is a memorial to the genocide. So at least there's a memorial to the genocide in this country, if not officially recognized. I think in one of the very first days after um, it was uh, being celebrated or commemorated, I think some Turks smashed up the memorial. Very sad. You Armenians are sensible people. My friends, Armenian friends said, don't worry. We knew that would happen. It's the plinth, which is the expensive bit. The rest we can replace easily. <laughs> so harsh political realities, but a good realism. Anyhow, it was an amazing time. Sorry, I've turned the thing off. How do I get it on? Oh. Um, and here were some of the young people and the picture of our rat in the background. And uh, it was a time really of commemoration. Beauty and remembrance, formal and informal. Uh, on the very day itself, up by the Genocide Memorial, there was, of course, a, a very great time of meeting and music. And it was a cold day, as you can see, but all these young children sang beautifully. And then they stood out there in the cold, in the rain, for about a couple of hours, holding their flags bravely and never complaining. Wonderful young kids. I'm very privileged to have a tree in the grounds of the Genocide Memorial uh, with my name and a phrase we use a lot in British military terms, lest we forget. We must never forget. Anyone who's not been to Artsakh, please do go. I'm very pleased that two of my friends, Cathy and Paul Meller, are here. I think it'll be nearly as many times as I've been. How many now is it, Cathy? 80. How many? 80. 80. Well, I'm 86, so you're overtaking me rapidly. <laughs> but it is such a beautiful, beautiful land. But it was a place of real terror in that war. Stepanakir was a place like hell. As say 400 grand missiles a day were fired every day from Shushi. And... Uh, each one could inflict damage and destruction, like this. That's what a grad could do. 400 a day, pounding in on the little capital city, Stepanakert. And the low-flying aerial bombardment. Um, the man in the blue jeans and his brother had been called in from the front line because his house got this direct hit and this huge explosion. And I'm afraid underneath that pile of rubble are his pregnant wife and two little girls. There was no electricity, there was no power-assisted equipment for moving rubble. It was their grave. And I'm sorry to say I could show you hundreds and hundreds of pictures like that, having been there so many times in the war. But those speak enough. They show the reality. Um, I'm pressing the wrong one. Yeah, and during that time, all the civilians had to live below the ground in um, basements and cellars. And I used to go down there quite regularly. There was no electricity down there. So they were living in the dark, in the cold. It was absolutely horrible. But I should never forget the courage of your people, your young people particularly, in those terrible days. And our hero is a real hero, Vardan Tadevosian. He's turned this ruin into a place of hope for the hopeless and help for the helpless. That was the bombed out old building they gave us in Stepanakert. I say there wasn't one that wasn't bombed out. But we now support, Hart now supports in that building a rehabilitation centre which offers new paradigms of care and a range of therapies not known in the former Soviet Union, bringing new forms of treatment for children and adults with disabilities. The latest thing Vardan has done has been to build an extension for children with autism. Very important and very imaginative. 
There are all kind of important creative activities and day-to-day -day activities for the kids with autism. But they obviously are not very good when they get home telling their families what they did during the day. So there is actually a video camera which is relayed back to the parents' homes so that they can see what the kids have done during the day and build on it when they get home in the evening. Creative stuff. Caroline, congratulate you. This is fantastic. We are now the great audience. Heard more. And I recently visited with Vartan, uh, well, in, in April. Unfortunately, I missed the 25th anniversary of yours to see. But I, it's the center by itself. It done tremendous improvement for the, not only for our disabled children, but the whole Artsakh community. And the whole Artsakh health welfare system, it's, it's great. And we are so pleased that now it's expanding into the uh, becoming an autism center, which I've got here some leaflet to distribute whoever is interested, which I'm sure majority of you. So we will continue the effort. Thank you so much with your basis. We will uh, support you on behalf of Armenian Medical Association and also individually. And we will uh, carry this work even further to perhaps all the underdeveloped or the developing countries who need our help. Thank you. Well, thank you for those words of encouragement and your support and your engagement with the amazingly inspirational rehab centre, Vardan and his staff. I mean, it really is inspirational. And uh, I say it's, it's for me, it's an epitome of the spirit of Armenia. Thanks for your visits to the United States. Speaking of the United States, this morning I got a news deal from Armenian National Committee of America, that's Haitat, in which it states that the American ambassador on his end of term speech, farewell address, he says the occupied territories must be given up. That's an important statement, especially when there is a new ambassador coming in. Mm -hmm. While our such response has been there is no occupied territories, they're liberated. Especially now that the highway from Artsakh to the Lake Seban is open. What is the British government's <laughs> viewpoint or statement? Well, thank you for a very unhappy question, which will bring a very unhappy answer. Um, the British government does not recognize anything to do, not just the genocide, but with the right of Artsakh to self-determination. I argue again and again and again that Artsakh deserves its determination at least as much as the people of Kosovo, at least. Uh, I was there in, just after the massacre in Maraha. I saw decapitated bodies. I saw burnt bodies. Civilians, innocent civilians, Azerbaijan attacked at seven in the morning and carried out a massacre in that place and many other places as well. So I argue again and again that Artsakh has the right to self-determination. And I'm going to finish with a poem. A poem, again, it's part of the beauty of the spirit of Armenia, written by this little lad, Gerhard. He was a little lad when his village was attacked by the Azeris. His family had to flee for their lives. He didn't want to go. He clung onto a doorpost. He had to be dragged away. And after being dragged away, he wrote this poem. And I eventually went back later with him and his family as they went back to their village, which had been completely destroyed. But I'm going to finish with his words in his poem he wrote at the age of 11. Of course, it was so much better in Armenian, but I can't do that Armenian. And I think English may be more useful for some of us here. And I'll just read this, and then I will finish. I climbed barefoot the mountains to pay my last visit with yearning. The mountain looked at me and became dark. What are you doing, black-eyed child, he asked. I knelt down at the bank of the river Tata to pay my last visit. The river suddenly became rough. What are you doing, black-eyed child? I went out to beautiful bushland for the last time to pick some flowers. Shame on you, the bushes told me again. And when I looked at the beautiful sun with tears in my eyes, how can I leave all this, I wept. How can I leave Artsakh? You as a mother love me and embrace me. And I lay down on the ground. I hugged the holy land. And I shouted loud so that the earth would hear me. No, no, in our life we will never leave Artsakh. We'll never search for haven in other lands. Let Artsakh be our grave. I've been born in these mountains. I'll become soil in Madakis, his village. I will be soil, I'll be a rock. Only if my village is always alive. I will mix with the soil of my land. And silently listen to the voice of the river Tata. Wonderful. So, 
I finish with that. Thank you for letting me share some of the pain and the passion and the privilege of being with your wonderful people in Armenia and in Artsakh through those dreadful years, but seeing how you always create beauty from the ashes of destruction. It is important to know that Artsakh is not about kilometers, hectares, it is not about the territory, but it is about the highest value we have, a human life. And, you know, today we have a daughter of Tatul Karpeyan, uh, a hero of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh war. And, you know, we don't, yes, if you just stand up, if you could see, so his father is a hero. And uh, we don't stop to pay tribute and to honor our heroes, heroes, starting from late 80s till now. Because due to the heroism and patriotism, we have liberated and free Artsakh. And I would like everyone to know that in Armenia, in diaspora, we are ready to stand and to protect our sisters and brothers living in Artsakh in case if there is a war or aggression imposed by the enemy. On the other hand, I would like to reiterate the position of my government. We think that the best way for the resolution of this conflict is through peaceful negotiations. And the status of Artsakh and the security of the people of Artsakh is of highest priority for my country and for my government. To the question about the occupied territory, I believe Ambassador meant that Arme uh, the lands of Armenians who are which are occupied by, by Azerbaijan should be returned to Armenia. It's Getashen, uh, Shahumyan, Nakhijevan, <laughs> so yeah. But we in Armenia, in Artsakh, we do not have occupied territories. We have liberated lands which um, where um, we have uh, amazing people who live, who create, who, um, who see the world differently.